Good morning and thank you for those for joining us for our fourth session of today's XG Firewall Academy. Before we start, I'd like to go over a couple of housekeeping points for today's webinar. All attendees will be on mute for the duration of the presentation. However, please feel free to post questions by the question and answer panel or the chat box, which can be located on the right hand side of your screen in our GoToWebinar panel. Join us for today's session. We have our dedicated Sophos experts who will be answering all your questions while we're watching today's session, XG case studies and best practices. And furthermore, after today's video, we'll be, be addressing the most relevant questions live with Lucas after today's recording. And finally, for those who potentially miss any of the sessions from last week or need to drop out early or potentially miss any of the beginning, all sessions are being recorded and will be posted on our event page within 24 hours. The URL is being displayed on the screen, but we will be presenting you with the URL on our chat box, as well as providing you with a follow up email so you can get access to all the on demand sessions. So without further ado, I now kick off today's session. Sit back and have a nice informative session. Good day, everybody. Uh, welcome to this session. Um, so we will be looking at um, a use case for migrating from SG to XG. Um, by ways of introduction, I'm Lucas Pelser. I work in the South African re region. I'm a pre-sales engineer in this side of the world. Um, I've been chosen to do this session because we have successfully migrated quite a large number of customers from SG to XG. And uh, I have quite a nice use case to share with you and what you should be looking out for and how should you prepare your partners uh, and customers to migrate from SG to XG. So SG has been a long running product for Sophos. So we've been having it for quite a while and there's a lot of customers that love the product and um, to convince them is just one of the parts to move from, from the SG to the XG appliance. And um, But technically it's very possible and uh, it's not that much of a daunting task. We're going to um, show you some uh, couple of uh, interesting uh, things to look out for in this session. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I'll move on to, to, to this session and you will see the migration story here is basically the background of the story. It's a government customer that's been using SG for more than two years and um, they have a thousand uh, user plus environment. So we needed to actually move them. Um, first of all, we had to convince them to actually purchase the XG and uh, they've done so and then we had to actually then start a migration plan. So we first made a backup of the of the SG um, and we to see a complete overview of the policies um, we actually if for the partners out there that doesn't know we do have a migration tool um, that we can run so we can run the you make a backup of the SGs I'm sure it has been covered in the previous sessions but we've made a backup of the SG we run it through the migration tool um, the migration tool is a virtual machine that we run and um, we convert the config to an XG in a backup format so what I mean by that is you restore the backup for uh, um, this backup file to the XG and uh, you should have a complete migration from SG to XG. There is a couple of caveats around this so we'll we'll talk about them uh, a little bit later but the, the migration tool is a nice way to start. I found that that is the easiest way especially if you don't want to start from scratch. There's also some customers that do want to start from scratch which is not entirely a bad idea for various of reasons so you can actually start from scratch with the XG um, you just have to make sure you make nice uh, config um, screenshots of what the SG looks like and then you can actually um, uh, build the XG from scratch in a more simple SG deployment cases but that's not always the, this, this the case so after the the migration tool was run uh, the migration tool will actually tell you what cannot might be migrated and what is um, kind of what is the flaws or what is the the objects that's a problem and it will actually give you a report in terms of um, what objects won't be um, restored to the XG format or what objects are not supported and um, then we restore the backup to an offline XG so we didn't just put the XG in line we actually put it on a table and uh, we ran the restore of the SGs um, uh, after the migration tool to the XG to see if it what it looks like and then we scheduled a change window so it wasn't all that easy to be honest so the change window we had was only uh, 
half an hour at a time so that's a really short change window to change a firewall because you can imagine um, as a firewall is a key component of this customer um, the change windows that we had is very very um, minute and we also had to actually uh, do it uh, obviously after hours and um, so the change window was approved for us and then we installed the XG in the change window time frame we had. So what was key? The key was preparation. Obviously, we had to prepare properly. We, we had to um, log on to the actual SG and make sure we've got all the config ready. Um, the, there's a lot of nitty and dirty things you can forget about, like site-to-site -site VPNs. Uh, one of the things that um, caught uh, us, basically, was also the fact that you had to uh, do, uh, they had a hotspot portal on the SG. So those things are some things to look at, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, we obviously um, inform partners about the migration tool that it is a migration tool to to make your life easier so that you can know that there is something out there um, and then understand the limitations what I mean by that is that the SG does have some some uh, features that uh, is not available in XG as such but mostly of the most of it is but um, if there is limitations just uh, make sure you understand what those are and then what we had to do is that we had to look at what objects are not not being migrated. Just some examples of that was the Wi-Fi hotspots portal, for example. Certificates is obvious because certificates um, cannot be uh, exported and uh, migrated. You'd have to recreate this or regenerate certificates. And then we had certain DNATs like for Outlook Web Access. That was quite a big one for us. Um, Outlook Web Access have a very special way of being published via DNATs and um, that the migration tool didn't uh, migrate. And like I said before, site-to-site VP. -site, uh, Another thing within the preparation that was uh, key for this customer and partner was uh, to ignore inactive objects. So there was a lot of routes and policies that was created in the SG because um, now normally these SGs has been in environments for many years. So this SG has been floating in this environment for more than three years. And there was a lot of objects that was created and no firewall cleanup was done. So a lot of these objects weren't being used. A lot of the routes actually weren't be used. And there was also some policies that was created was never used. So just identify those, look which ones are used, being used, what traffic is flowing through them, and uh, that will make your task a lot easier. You'll find half of the things you don't actually have to migrate because they're not, uh, they're not, or they're not in use at the moment. Some of, some of the issues we encountered while migrating this customer was um, uh, device access was not configured. Um, so the first time we actually um, uh, um, installed the XG, um, all the device access tabs were, were disabled. So we couldn't actually log on to the firewall from externally. Um, this caused some issues uh, at the night of the migration because I had to remotely assist and uh, we couldn't get remote access to it. And it took a while to figure out that the migration tool didn't obviously adopt this. We'd have to enable um, device access on the XG, and this works differently from the XG than the SG. Um, we also had issues where the ARP table of the ISP router wasn't updating. What do I mean by this is literally the, the ISP router would keep the old MAC address of the SG active for their ARP timeout was very high. So it was set to something like two hours. So in two hours, we couldn't access the device from outside. So we reckon there was something wrong with the XG or there wasn't there was an interface problem um, only to find out that the interface uh, didn't update on the ISP router so that's not really related to an XG to XG migration but it is one of the things that can um, hinder the migration process which it did for us and then the wireless APs they needed to be approved so obviously the if you have uh, this SG used to be a, my, uh, a wireless controller as well so as you can see it was quite a complex environment um, um, so the XG also has that ability, but all the APs will pop up into the XG's pro portfolio, but you would have to approve those because the XG has never seen those APs. They were enrolled on the SG device. The hotspot portal settings didn't migrate, so the hotspot portal didn't look exactly the same, or there wasn't actually a hot ports, uh, hotspot portal, so they have a guest portal that didn't migrate. Um, the Exchange Outlook web access didn't work because we had to create a new DNAT for those, and then also so the aliases APs wasn't propagated with the migration tool. So what is this? So they have an ISP, um, the specific customer that gives them five public IPs and we create them as aliases on the XGs and, and, and similar to the SG for that matter. 
but these public IPs weren't my propagated properly in the mic with the migration tool. So we had to go and specify the, the aliases. It was only five IP addresses, but we needed to realize that we have to do that. And then there's also things like passwords and security keys, like the wireless SSID pre-share key that didn't propagate, obviously, because that is a secure um, mechanism. So we had to find out what was the previous wireless SSID key, pre-share key, so we didn't have to go and change every machine. Um, so wireless settings. And then some some of the issues that we encountered continued. Uh, they have reds, so they have the SoFOS red Ethernet um, devices. So these are, are the remote Ethernet devices that we use. And uh, the deployment of those, the branches was connected um, with these reds. So the reds obviously have an unlock code, if those who don't know. And uh, we had to reintroduce those red appliances to the XG with the unlock codes. That were uh, those unlock codes you get in an email or you'd have to ask uh, one of the sales engineers to give you the unlock code for those reads. So just be aware that if you have reads in the SG environment, just be aware they won't automatically start working on the XG. You would have to enroll those. So that, that's one of the, the, the problems we encountered. Then another thing we saw is that the user certificates needed to be deleted so they can be re regenerated. So what I mean by this is they had VPN policy, so the users would VPN into the actual site. And what happened here is that if a user wanted to VPN in, um, it will give them a certificate error because they didn't have to actually, they didn't want to, they didn't reinstall the client. And uh, all we had to do here is that um, the users was propagated via the migration tool and we had to actually delete um, all the old certificates so that the XG can reissue a VPN certificate for the user for it to work. We'd also had to um, obviously reissue the VPN clients for the users. So the users that were using VPN clients, we had to actually regenerate those. Um, uh, we reinstalled that um, VPN client. That could be quite a daunting task, but um, with version 18 on the XG, um, there is uh, quite a way a few ways to automate this installation um, via the actual um, the portal, so the user portal. The users can log on to the user portal and download their new SSL VPN um, uh, client and settings, and uh, that resolved that issue. So that that was something that was uh, one of the biggest tasks to do, but it's something to watch out for when you do uh, migrate from SG to XG. Then the site-to-site -site VPNs needed to be recreated. The only issue here. Uh, was that actually site-to-site -site VPNs, as you know, most of us are using pre-shared keys there, sometimes certificates. But if you are using pre-shared keys, those pre-shared keys weren't migrated. So you'd have to go to a site-to-site -site VPN, say, from um, Sophos to Cisco ASA. You would have to re-find out that, what that pre-shared key was to regenerate that site-to-site um, -site VPN. And then from the DNAT's point of view, just pay attention. What I did is I made a list of the DNAT's on the device and uh, I actually tested them from external to see which ones were working and which ones weren't working and uh, just just a little sample file of what I, I did and uh, I could actually establish what DNATs are being used and which ones are not because I was migrating DNATs that actually wasn't needed or wasn't used anymore. So it's best to test these while the SG is still online. Um, go through the config and uh, test these um, DNATs to see if there is any issues um, or which ones are working, which ones do you have to migrate and which ones are not working. Because um, if you do migrate them you, and you don't know which ones were in use and which ones were not, there could be underlying issues and you'll be struggling with something that has never worked or hasn't even worked on the SG and the migration tool actually migrated it. So some of the lessons learned when we moved this customer is the preparation is key, obviously. We had to, to prepare ourselves properly. We had to, to make sure that um, uh, we have everything in place. Um, we've learned quite a lesson with this. Um, like I said, we did a uh, one or two change control windows because of the first time we had the ARP issue with the ISP. Um, we had the, the alias IPs that weren't um, migrated properly. So that was one of the issues that um, made the change window fail in just half an hour. Obviously, it's very short. 
um, and that all migrations are the same. So, but I'm saying by this is that if you do migrate from SG to XG, some people will have reads, some will have side to side VPNs, but some not. So if the migration tool works really well, if there's no uh, things like hotspot, wireless hotspot zones, um, or if there's no side to side VPNs, then it's all good. Um, so that could make your migration a lot easier. So this one was a lot more uh, complex. Um, also then set expectations, um, you know, so from our point of view, the customer, uh, he assumed that if you plug the XG in, everything will work. Um, it, it was a, a trial and error type of thing. We can't just plug in a new firewall and expect everything to work straight off the bat. We had to, um, this customer was very pressurized in terms of their Outlook web access. They wanted their emails to work 24 seven. So even though we did the change 12 o'clock at night, we still had some of their clients phoning or some of their end users phoning us saying they can't access the email and they were putting pressure on us to get the DNATs working. So set expectations of a change window. Don't just take a half an hour window. Uh, set yourself an hour or two or two hours um, for the change window so that you can properly prepare and install the XG and make changes as you need to know. So know, know the environment and, 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 and prepare properly. And then allow for a few change controls. So you might not have a successful change the first time around like we did. Uh, be prepared to roll back. So what I'm saying by that is just leave the XG as is. To roll back is a pretty easy process. You just plug the X SG back in and just leave it the way it was. Um, uh, so we didn't change anything on the SG. If we needed to roll back, we would just plug the SG back in and everything will be back online like it was. Um, and then, like I said before, allow for long enough change control windows. And um, so the actual um, firewalls obviously is um, it's a crucial part to a business. So you will get a short turns window. So prepare well for, for your move to this. Then some advice I could give you is document everything, screenshot sample. I will show you something that I did for this customer. Um, so if you want to actually go ahead and uh, maybe just take screenshots of the SG deployments, I think that really helped me um, because the problem with this is we didn't want to um, change anything on the SG. We didn't want to actually uh, make any changes on the SG so that we can access it afterwards because if the change would fail, we'd have to plug the SG back in. And therefore, we didn't want to change the IP address of the internal network to reference back to it. So once the change was successful, we actually changed the IP address of the SG so that we can use it offline and log on to it too. Because most of these customers that move from SG to XG, is they, they're probably going to, you know, the SG is probably end of life for them. So they, they're going to trash it or, or get rid of it. So they can actually then give you access to the old appliance if you need to go reference something back. So just change the IP addresses and make it available offline to yourself so that you can go back and reference something on that SG. So if you come down two weeks down the line and a customer says to you, um, I cannot connect to this DNAT because um, this used to work two weeks ago and now it doesn't, you can actually go and log on to the SG to reference something back. Understand the environment really well. I've asked for many network diagrams. I've asked for where the user sit, what branches to how they have, what are the IP address ranges. So it does help if the customer can give you some info onto their network, into the environment. We were shooting a bit in the dark with our in um, this specific use case. Uh, we had to like uh, go and find where the exchange server is sitting because the customer didn't know himself. And a lot of the use cases, unfortunately, will be like that. So it's a trial and error. Try and find out where the exchange server is. But most of the information you can actually get from the SG's config. So that really helped me a lot with this use case. And then make sure the customer is not using a feature that XG cannot provide. So this is one thing, like, for example, sport scan blocks. It's, it's, it's a feature that's um, not um, available on XG as yet. It will come out soon. But um, look at these, and if the expectation was that uh, if there's very technical people at the customer and they were using this feature, they're going to complain that you actually move them to XG. So just make sure that all the features they do require is already on XG. Um, at, in, in version 18, most of it is there, but there's still small things like the sports scans that can cause you issues. And then focus on the advantages of the XG's features that it provides behind the SG. So what I'm saying by this is um, if the customer gets deterred and he what, doesn't want the XG anymore, more because it's too much of a change problem um, focus on the benefits they can get with XG like the performance and ease of use and reporting and so forth so and
and uh, development around XG and that itself is Sophos' flagship and so on. So focus on the actual product and what it can provide to the customer if it does install. We got a lot of uh, kickback with this um, use case specifically where the customer said I should have just stayed with SG um, because of the technicalities behind it. Um, but partially it is the customers also didn't know the environment too well. So so just focus on, on what is best for the customer. And then the other key thing I could say is persistence. Um, just keep on going, keep on convincing the customer that XG is the best way to go and uh, keep on uh, trying for change control windows till, till you succeed in doing this. Anyways, I think that is it. Um, don't be deterred about um, moving from SG to XG. Like I said, this was quite a useful success um, case here. Um, we successfully migrated within two half or three half an hour change windows. The third attempt, we got it right. And um, so just keep on uh, looking at uh, these use cases and, and um, think of how to migrate customers from SG to XG in terms of uh, it can be done. Technically, it's very possible and uh, it's not that complicated. Thank you for your time and thank you for, for watching this session. Great, thank you. And we now have um, Lucas with us to be able to do a live Q&A. So Lucas, if I don't mind asking you to come off mute, I've been making a, a long list of the questions that have been coming in to, to fire them across to you if you're ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Perfect. So I'll start with uh, the first one. When will port scan blocks become available? So yeah, so I can't give an exact date, but it's a, it is on the on the on the roadmap. So, but I'm not a, allowed to give an exact date. So otherwise, we'll get hold to it. So, <laughs> um, it, it's it's soon on the roadmap. So it will be available pretty soon. Perfect. Thank you. And sorry, I did forget to point out for anybody who has any questions, please keep them coming through the Q and A panel, and we can have time to address um, as many as we can with um, Lucas. Next up, we have where can we find the list of unsupported features? Um, so um, at the moment there is a actual um, I think it's answered in one of the answers there's a web URL we'll send to 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 you where um, the features are what's available on XG and, and what's not. Perfect. Um, someone's also addressed, they've also had some of these um, issues in the migration process and um, they have asked, has this been improved or better handled in the last migration tool? Yes, so I think um, with the migration tool, if you have used it ever before, um, it is quite a tricky tool because it's a virtual machine we spin up and then we migrate it. But what I've found is a lot of people click next on the actual, um, there's, a, there's a small window that pops up that tells you that these are the, are the complications or these are the things that wasn't migrated. And uh, the problem is a lot of people I find with the partners I work just click next straight off the way and they think, okay, they migrated. They don't actually read the list of exceptions. So those exceptions are very important actually to go through to see what is the list that the migration tool actually hasn't migrated, but it isn't highlighted in such a way that you see it uh, that well. So a lot of people just skip that. It's almost like reading the terms and conditions or something. People just click it and go off and don't read that part. So most people skip that part and that's why there is complications around it. Great, thank you. Um, questions come in. What is the latest full version of XG? Is it 18.0.4? That's correct. It's version 18 MR4. That's the latest version we've launched. Uh, and this is, um, it may have been addressed in, in our previous sessions, but just in case anybody um, didn't attend sessions one to three, how would I migrate from a CyberOne to a Sophos XG firewall? Okay, so yes, um, that's, you don't actually need a migration tool for that. Um, for CyberOM, you can actually migrate CyberOMs to SFOS, which we call, um, which is the actual operating system for, for XG. So CyberOMs can actually natively run the Sophos XG software. So there's a migration path. You can actually log on to your id.sophos.com and uh, migrate your CyberOM straight to an XG, and then you can back it up and restore it to another um say XG hardware. So the path for CyberOMS is a little bit easier than SG. Perfect. Uh, next question we have. Um, which version of the XG firewall would you recommend? And is there a difference between um, the versions? 
Yes, so there's a big difference. Um, 17 was a version that's been out for a long time and we've been running with that. Obviously, the latest version is version 18, which is a major release. Um, there's quite a few web interface changes on 18. The GUI actually looks different. So there is a big uh, uh, community around this. Um, is 18 better than 17? But we've, we've, we're focusing on making it a more of an enterprise grade firewall. So we've actually put the net rules separate and the SSL rules separate in version 18. Once you get used to version 18, it's really a nice version to use. Um, MR4 is recently out and it's been really, really stable. So that's the version I would go for. Um, I encourage my partners to move to it as um, it does give you a, a lot more flexibility in terms of SD-WAN routing and the NATing policies and also the SSL inspection. So that's, that's the version I would recommend. Perfect. Um, someone's asking, if we're planning to move from an SG to an XG, should it be the same as the OS version? Um, so it's 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 the OS in the back end of SG and XG is completely different. Um, so that's a, a complete different um, environment. So you don't really keep note of that or you wouldn't track note of the operating system that you're using on the two different devices because they're completely different. They, and they're completely different um, 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 shell stack, if you want to call it that. Great. And someone's asking, is there like a step by step guide or um, a reference sheet that they can refer to to support with this? So um, not on the website. There's some communities out there and so on and because it's a case by case basis. It's different for every customer. Um, the best is just to reach out to your software SE to assist you, especially if you're a partner. If you're a customer, it's best to ask the partner to assist you with this. I wouldn't recommend trying this on your own. Um, it, it, you know, there is a migration tool, but like, like we've seen here, it's not bulletproof. So or, or it's not the silver bullet, if you want to call it that. So there is a lot of complications around these migrations sometimes but it's no because a step-by-step -step guide would be maybe for one customer it will work but not for the next one perfect and someone's just asked what's the unique feature of a Sophos firewall I think um, one of our things that we really, really stand out of um, in, in, in comparison to our competitors is synchronized security. Um, we really have a product that inter can interact with all our other products um, where the other vendors really struggle is we, we have an endpoint, we have our Wi-Fi solutions and we can isolate the endpoint when it, when it really gives some trouble um, or if there's any malware or malicious um, any software on an endpoint, we can automatically isolate it where the other vendors um, have to interact or do APIs to third party vendors to actually interact with them and uh, block things like that. So I think that is unique for us. I think our interface is nice. It looks good. Um, uh, and uh, I think we, we have a good range of firewalls as well around. So that's the real differentiator is really synchronized security. That makes the device really unique. Is it possible to migrate email protection settings from SG to XG? So the migration tool will actually migrate those settings. I would just double check them, but um, it, once it's migrated it, but uh, yes, it is possible. Great. Um, let's see. How do we configure XG Firewall as a gateway for two IPS? I think he, mean, he meant uh, ISPs. Um, yes, so that is very easy. We have a WAN link uh, load uh, balancer in the, in the XG and also we have SD-WAN routing. So you can just go under the root settings under the gateway and then just create another gateway for another ISP. We do support um, some monitoring of, for that interface. So we can have active active interfaces or we can have active active, or active passive. And um, we can also um, have more than two. We can have four if you want four interfaces so it's very it's it's quite easy to configure thank you um so how do i convert configuration backup into a readable csv format um, unfortunately, that's not supported. Um, it's, yeah, I have had the question before, and uh, the problem with that is it's a security risk to put your um, format into a clear text. So we don't actually have the ability to export the XG's format or configuration format in a text file for you. Um, we don't support it because if somebody could steal that um, file, if you want to call it that, um, all the information would be shared in clear text with the next person. So it's it's not possible 
possible, unfortunately. Next up, we said, what devices can be migrated to the XG firewall? So literally any range in SG, also obviously CyberRoam. Um, so the SG range is um, it's pretty similar to what we have in XG. So if you have an SG 105 or an SG 650, it can be migrated to a 650. So any any firewall range within the SG range. Perfect. Uh, someone asked, what is DNAT? It's the DNATs. Okay, so DNATs are revert or what we call um, destination NATs. So what they are is is when you want, if you have a public web server and uh, you need to publish that to the internet, a DNAT will make that available to users. So if you have an online website or store and it's behind the Sophos XG, you would have to create a DNAT for the users to access that specific um, web service. Thank you, Lucas. Um, someone's asked, is endpoint security free? There is a home version, but that home version doesn't integrate with the firewall. So the short answer is no. Um, you have to purchase uh, the version. If you want the version to work with synchronized security and the firewall, you would have to um, purchase the product. Thank you. Uh, someone says, we're migrating to XG this month. What's the best way to view the rule policies that are in use? Yes, that's a that's that's one of the nice features that XG version 18 actually has now. It's got a usage count, so if you reset the usage count, you can see it. But on SG, um, that's something that's not available. So what I've done is I've literally went and tested the rules to see if they actually work or to see if there's a there is actually a machine behind that because most of them point to an IP address, and then you'll find that that IP address is either dead or it's or it's non-existent. Uh, it's unfortunately a tedious process in the SG to test those rules there's no no easy way thank you um let's see what else we have apologies if I pronounce this wrong is xg able to scan mapi mapi brackets google workspace sync for microsoft and outlook at the moment it's not it's not um uh, supported in terms of to scan that the only way you can really um uh do email protection on it is if you point your MX record to the XG and it will actually um, scan the email in that sense. But um, natively, it doesn't um, currently support um, that technology. What is the default DNS cache? How can we increase it? So that is under the advanced firewall settings under the under the command line. Um, I think it's um, 3,800 seconds, but uh, it's something you can increase in the back end. Um, you can just um, down, uh, go to Google and actually type in Sophos XG command line interface, and it will give you a document there how to set those settings. How do you reduce high use of CPU in XG firewall? Um, so um, the, it's something we can't really um, remove um, or you can't really set any settings in the terms of the CPU usage. We, um, as Sophos, keep the technology behind the back in terms of to scale it. So most of the time when your CPU usage is high on the XG, you should look at your IPS settings. The IPS is mostly almost 80% of the, the time the culprit of high CPU usage on the Sophos XG. The Sophos XG, um, if you if you spec it too small, you might uh, uh, struggle with CPU usage. So I would recommend you look at your IPS policies and fine tune them because the default IPS policy on the XG literally look for every single signature. So if it will look for a Linux protection suite, even if it's maybe not a Linux server behind it. So you can tweak those policies to, to actually get the CPU um, to go a little bit lower. And, and that's basically the only way to really get some better CPU performance out of the device. Thank you. What's the best way to identify an unused OBJ or object? Um, so it's, uh, I think they've asked it already. Um, um, so really it's just to test that rule to see if that rule still works with an IP address that's available or not. That's the only way on SG. On XG, it's got a usage counter, which is nice. It will actually show you that that rule is being hit or not. Uh, let's see, how to activate single sign-on with Sophos? 
Okay, so we would normally use uh, uh, the, the STAS agent. You would have to install that on your Active Directory server. You go under the authentication tab, you enable it there. Um, there is a nice document to do it, but it's very possible. You can just um, integrate it with eDirectory or a Microsoft Active Directory, and then um, you load the STAS agent and that will support single sign-on. We've had uh, a few cyber own questions coming in. Um, can I take backup from a cyber own and restore this backup to an XG firewall? And the answer is no. You would first have to migrate that cyber own to a XG SFOS um, uh, installer or convert it to an XG format, and then you can back it up and restore it. Thank you. What else will do we have here? I have 50 users and I want to get limited access for some users and some users full access. How do I do this? Okay, so you would have to use Active Directory integration or single sign-on as we um, so spoke about in the previous question. Firstly, to identify the users and then you can use groups to actually in firewall rules to give them certain web policies. So you can say, for example, executives are allowed to watch YouTube, but the help desk staff is not. So it's very possible by using Active Directory groups. You can also create local groups on the XG. Obviously, that's a tedious task if you have more than, a, say, 200 or 500 users users or even 2,000 users, but um, you can do it local with local groups as well in the XG. Next up we have, is there some kind of checklist available containing some um, tr troubleshooting steps? Uh, there is a lot of forums on migrating from SG to XG. Um, once again, it's not. Uh, it's it's like for my migration. How do you troubleshoot? You know, if access points are not working. But um, if you migrate to 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 blow, uh, to another um, product or whatever, you might not have been using XG APs or Sophos APs. So so you know that it's different for every scenario. Once again. Someone's just asked, how do I get a free learn access for the Sophos XG firewall? Uh, a free what? So, excuse me. It says uh, a free learn access, maybe um, okay. a so free think, demonstration yeah. or like it will play around within the, the system. Yes. All right. Yeah. So what you can do is you can actually download Sophos XG for home use and you can install that on a virtual or hardware platform and you could use that to play around with. Um, that's that's just to, if you want to do that from a training perspective, all our training gets delivered through partners mainly. Um, so you'd have to get in hold with the Sophos representatives and ask them where can you attend the training or do the training online. What is the difference between hardware reset and a software reset? So uh, a hardware reset will literally reset the administrator password as well. So it will literally clean it to blank. A software reset will just basically almost reboot the device. Um, the admin password will still be valid. You won't be able to get into it. So hardware reset is, is a lot more intrusive. That will literally uh, wipe the config and there would be nothing like left of the device's config and the password will be set to default. Thank you. Um, I'll do just a couple more if you don't mind, Lucas, because there's lots still coming in. Um, how can I synchronize our user groups from an active diction, um, directory sorry, with a Sophos XG firewall? Okay, so yes, um, it automatically will do that. If you use the conical names of Active Directory, it will actually um, sync that into um, into uh, into the Sophos XG automatically. So whatever groups you have in Active Directory, um, you can as soon as you do the import my, uh, from Active Directory, it will actually mic or import those groups into Active Directory. Uh, we have some questions coming in about Sophos Home. Is there a minimum or maximum user limit for the Sophos XG firewall for the Home Edition? Yes, yeah, so it has a limitation of 50 IPs behind it. it um, that's changed of recent a bit, but it's the, the idea is that it will only support one core CPU and, two, and four gigs of RAM. Um, so it can't scale in terms of a business. It's not powerful enough. So we actually limit it by giving you only two, uh, one, uh, one CPU and four cores of RAM. So it can't scale to be used for a business. Perfect. Next up, um, are you aware if there are any um, encryption certificates come into the XG firewall? And if so, when would that be? 
Um, at the moment, um, it does have certificates in the back end, as far as I know, and certificate of authorities. Um, it's, I'm not sure exactly what he means by the question, but I think uh, if he's talking about the certificates, it does support it at the moment. Uh, this question came in towards the end of the, the video and they said, what about the application filters and web filter policies? Do they also get migrated across? Uh, yes, they do. Those uh, natively get uh, migrated um, across. Perfect. Um, what else? Have we've done that one. Uh, rules and policies when migrating to version 17 or 18 of the XG were created um, their own DNATs. How does one stop that? Oh, okay, yes. Um, that is a, a, a link NAT rules that we call. Um, you cannot prevent it because if you do uh, move from 17 to 18, you will actually uh, have to have those DNATs for them to work. So we, when we might move the firewall to a latest version, we actually want all your rules to still work. So we natively move all the rules so that your web, uh, your DNATs still work and so on. And that's linked to a firewall. So you would have to go through those and clean them up if you need to. Um, that's the only way you can do that. Otherwise, if we do migrate you to 18, some of your web servers will stop and so forth. Are you aware if the Sophos HD will work with Azure Active Directory at all? Uh, yes, so it does. Um, we don't have any issues on that side. It, it, it fully supports that, yeah. And next up we have, um, how many XGs would you recommend to use with Software Central? Well, it, it's uh, that's a, a, a bit of a question, but yes, we can. You can put as many as you like. Um, uh, it's, it does have the ability to integrate with Sophos Central, and you can manage them from there. Um, we have clients with up to two thousand firewalls in in XG, so um, there's no real hard limit on that. It's it's not like there is a specific limit on that type of um, solution. Perfect. Sorry, just had a question and it's just lost from my view. Um, let's see what else we have. I know the team are doing a great job of getting back to some of these answers here. Is it possible to reschedule NAT rules on XG or NAT um. rules? Uh, yes, very possible. Um, I have seen a problem. You can just drag them up and down in a web browser. Um, the best browser that works for it is Firefox. Um, sometimes I've seen, the, oh, I'm saying Firefox, sorry, it's Chrome. Um, when you use Firefox or Microsoft Edge, sometimes you cannot drag things around and, you, and it seems like you can't move them. But if you use Chrome, you will be able to drag the naturals up and down. Um, so it, it is very possible. I will wrap up with a couple of maybe three more questions. Um, I've looked to see if there's a, an option to import users onto version 18, but I've no, had no success. Is there a way I could work around this? So, so that's if you do you want to use the users, yes or no? That's the first thing. Um, but um, you can um, definitely import users from Active Directory. You just have to follow the right procedure. It, it, it is definitely supported. We have all our customers almost are using that feature, so it's very possible. Next question: What is the best way to give one user access only for a specific website or cloud servers? So you would create a specific firewall rule for that user and then you will go under user authentication, add the user to that um, specific rule and then set policies for that user, like give him access to a YouTube web policy. As simple as that. Perfect. And I'll end with this question and then I will just go over a couple of um, other questions that I can see coming in from an admin perspective. Can you have different XG firewalls and Sophos access points from a different branches or companies in one, one Sophos central portal? Yeah, you 
uh, you can if you if you if you add them all to Sofa Central. We normally have what we call the partner portal, where you have different customers and different partner portals. At the moment, um, the partner portal doesn't support multiple customers in the same um, how can I say zone. You would have to log on to the customer central portal to add it in there. Um, but the partner portal makes it easy for you to access those uh, those Sofa Central dashboards. So you log into your partner portal if you look at customer A, you can click on him and actually then you can see his, um, he, uh, his firewall. It will open Sofa Central without asking you to authenticate because you're already the owner of that account. And the same will happen for customer B. Um, if you actually uh, add the, the firewalls to the to the uh, to different portals, you can actually add them to any portal you like as long as you've got access to the firewall to add it to a portal. Great. Thank you ever so much for that, Lucas. That was great. Um, just to remind everybody, please still continue posting your Q&As um, into the chat box. Um, we will wrap up the live questions for now, but we'll still have all our software experts on the chat box until the end of the session, um, who will be able to get back to you with any further questions. This is a reminder for those who may not have been with us um, last week, for joining us for full or my, more or live sessions, you will um, earn a free Sophos e-learning voucher for the XG Firewall training courses, and that's available for both end users and partners. In total, there's a, um, nine sessions across um, the week, so we have two more sessions next week and the following three the week after. Just a reminder that tomorrow's session will be kicking off at the same time, 10 to 11 a.m. GMT, which is Dublin, London, and we'll be going over getting the most from XG, routing and managing traffic. And for those who may not have been with us at the start to hear, um, you can have access to all our webinar recordings. Again, this session has been recorded and will be posted onto our event page within 24 hours. Technically, they're normally on there a lot sooner, but we just allow to extra time just in case we have any issues with downloading and re-uploading. This can be accessed through our event page, which is events.sophos.com slash EMEA XG Firewall Academy and as you can see on the right hand side this is just a print screen to see where you can see the upcoming sessions and which sessions have been made available on demand already. As mentioned, please continue to um, post your questions through the Q&A panel. The live Q&A has ended, but we'll be here for another 10 minutes to support with any questions. Once again, thank you very much for joining us and we look forward to welcoming you back to tomorrow's session.
Hi to those who are still with us on the live um, Q&A chat box. Just to say this will be closing in two minutes. The webinar and the chat box will be closing in two minutes. Thank you for those who joined us. The webinar has now ended and the chat panel will be now closed. For any questions that were not addressed, we'll be putting together an FAQ which we posted at the end of the XG Firewall Academy. For any um, sessions that you do miss, again, I'm just highlighting the area of the event page where these will be posted. That is events.sophos.com slash EMEA XG Academy. You can catch today's session and last week's three sessions on demand. Thank you for joining us today and have a lovely day.